All right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm rejoined by Lori Lewis, who is in, who is in Oregon. How are you doing, Lori? I am doing great. Thank you for having me back. At the end of the last one, you were like, there's more to talk about. And yeah, I'm no, thrilled. I, I, absolutely. <laughs> and Lori has changed thousands of lives through her coaching of intermittent fasting. And, and we talked a lot in the last one about intermittent fasting and, and the whole process itself. But what I wanted to really focus in on today was the role of coaching, because I think that coaching is often misunderstood or maybe not valued as much as, uh, as it should be. And I also think that when you take on something that's very personal, right? I mean, a personal growth or personal development, or in this case, like if you're, you can do intermittent fasting for, for health purposes and mental and physical health, it can be a very hard thing to do on your own. We're fantastic at starting things. Let's be honest. We can start things every day of the week. We can go, oh, look at that, that Peloton. That's a great idea. Let me buy that. And uh, and before and, and that's really the, the success of something like that is because it has inbuilt coaching in it. But uh, but often like we'll buy things or we'll start things or we'll sign up a gym membership or whatever. But at the end of the day, it, it peters out because it's we're not the greatest at self-sustaining. So that's where the role of coaching comes in. So. Lori, um, let's let's just start um, uh, at a very basic level here. And what do you see as the core role of a coach? And obviously, the coaching you do, but of coaches in general, what is the core role? Well, the core role. I think there's a core role in terms of the participant too. So I'll even start sure. there. I think the the person has to be energized committed to shifting something like a willingness to learn a willingness to change but also a willingness to be responsible and so as you said we we're great at making lists and getting motivated for a minute and a half you know? mm -hmm. <laughs> and so the role of coaching for me from my perspective and my experience as a person who's been coached and is a coach um the starting correctly like you want to get going in the right way we, we tend to you know we're talking about human nature here we tend to shoot straight out <laughs> run very fast like the old adage or we're very very timid and we don't trust ourselves and so the coach can offer a good push the coach can offer a good slowdown starting correctly with the idea that we do want it to be sustainable intentional something that we can keep going and and that it's fruitful that we yield the results that we're after and um i like to think of my coaching with all i love alliteration so i have all these words that start with c like customization and coaching and camaraderie and care and um consistency and curiosity so i think if we both the coach and the coachee approach this uh with this mindset we're up and running and it's valuable uh and so, uh, and, and, and agreed with those. And so, and so you can, you can set it up, uh, get commitment from the coachee, the coach, you start off all these good stuff and get everything set up in everything. There's in, in anything, there's always this kind of like initial kind of honeymoon period and everybody's like committed. And then you hit a bump because you always hit a bump. I mean, I'm, uh, and then I think that's where um, the role of the coach is, is so incredibly important. So how do you help when, how do you help somebody when they hit that first bump? Because, you know, they're, as human beings, we're kind of high, hardwired in many ways. So we hit the first bump and we go, oh yeah, I knew it wasn't going to work. And like, I'm just going to quit yeah. and head back to my <laughs> other life. Well, don't you think that the bumps are somewhat predictable? So in my mm -hmm. first sessions, whether it's a group program or one-on-one, -on -one, I uh, have my coaches, my participants, my students predict what will mm -hmm. derail you. You know the things you say to yourself, like you just said, oh, it wasn't going to work anyway. Well, that's your particular flavor. Everybody has, a, you know, kind of the same thing that they say to themselves, but in their own way, in their own words, and you know it, <laughs> you recognize. Mm -hmm. So, you know, life will derail us. Something stressful will happen. Something joyful will happen, like a vacation or a celebration. There will always, we'll get too busy or we'll get bored or, or, and we'll say certain things to ourselves and it's 
predictable. So knowing what those will be so that they can be recognized when they happen. And I, as the coach, when the person tells me, oh yeah, this is what always derails me when I don't accomplish what I set out to accomplish, then I'm ready for it. <laughs> and you can sniff it out a mile away. And yeah, so, No, I, yeah. I'm just going to say, I, I, I love that idea of actually having people you know, tell you what is, you know, predict what their, what their bump in the road is going to be or what can derail them. Because I think that's, that's fantastic because you get it out in the open and you also, as you say, we all have our own, we all have our own phrases. We have our own ways of looking at things. Um, and, and I think it can tell, it obviously tells you a lot then. If I were to say to you, oh, well, you know, I, I knew this was going to happen. I knew this wouldn't be able to sustain. So that tells you something about me that you can then dive in deeper exactly. with. Exactly. Right? People think some different flavors that people have is that it's not fair and nothing ever works out for me or uh, I'm, I'm so pathetic. I can never finish anything like, you know, and it can also be things that people said around us as we were growing up that just got mm -hmm. reinforced, reinforced, reinforced. So if we can somehow start to expose those things, but even if that's not exposed, there are, as a coach, there are predictable things in every human's path and journey. You know, in, in my coaching with intermittent fasting, there is the exuberant period and the I'm starting period. And then there's the adjustment phase. Like people are just changing their life and adjusting. And at some point people either get mad or bored or they're like, show me the money. Where are the results? So we're very quick to like demand results. Like I ate healthy for a day and how come I didn't lose? How come I'm not skinnier? You know? Yeah. But so, one, one, yeah. of the, one of the things that you're um, obviously, I mean, this is a tough thing for for, you know, a coach like you or for any coaches nowadays is just what you're touching upon there is that we live in a culture, pervasive culture where we're being fed these messages all the time that everything should be easy. It should be instant gratification. You shouldn't have to you shouldn't have to put a lot of effort into this. It should just happen. Mm -hmm. And and unfortunately, like people buy buy into this because they're bombarded with these messages all the time so how do you when you when you coach somebody knowing that that's probably lurking there somewhere uh, how do you address that let's see how well i i predict it as we said mm -hmm. and then i um give people the tools to get through that and that that in and if you, if you were to have one juicy morsel of the importance of having a coach is when those bumps and hurdles and derailments are, are approaching then it's really important to have a committed listener as a coach who is going to shine a spotlight on all the amazing things that are actually happening. So I can spin anything into gold. People will come into their calls with me and, and they're like, ah, oh, I was so bad. And this was hard. And this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is all such good news. We're learning a lot about you. We're learning a lot about your body. We're learning about how you respond to adversity. And it, it it's it can actually be exciting and then they're like oh this isn't as bad as i thought it was i'm like you're right so shining a spotlight on the good news and um having people feel like they really genuinely can keep going because motivation and inspiration are we know are very short-lived we get a burst of it and then it, it's very hard to motivate and inspire ourselves so it's great to have a coach it's great to have some buddies it's great to have a group and accountability partner uh, a lot of people feel like i don't want to tell anyone around me what i'm up to because if i fail i'll be really embarrassed or look stupid mm. or you know people will say i told you so and so i think people should be very choosy about who they share things, their commitments, their goals, their dreams with. Share your dreams and your commitments and your goals with people who are going to cheer you on, who have your yeah. back, who think you're amazing. Don't don't share your things with the soul crushing naysayers. So be choosy yeah. about who you share with. Yes, no, I, I think that's a great piece of advice. And that's another great reason to work with the coach because, you know, they're third party, they're independent, you've got the accountability, but also it's a safe environment, uh, as opposed to Yeah, why would you tell that person who who is is soul crushing or the one who's going to, you know, suddenly, at, you know, at a barbecue in six months go, Oh, weren't you supposed to you said you started this? How did that go? <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, even the tone, I know. Yeah. I love that you brought up a safe environment. That is, it's so important that the person uh, be nourished or nurtured or listened to or cajoled in the way that works for them. So part of the role of the coach is to discover at the beginning, but ongoingly, how is this person motivated? Are they someone who likes the carrot, likes the competition, likes a swift kick in the rear end? Or is it someone who likes a gentle nurturing and nudging and guiding their shoulders thoughtfully with lots of pats on the back? So we're, we are all different for sure. And as a coach, I love that discovery. I also think it's really important to remind the person of their goals. Like what brought you here? Because I've got it all all written down. And when mm -hmm. someone's mired in a frustration or feeling demoralized or like they just are terrible at everything, um, to remind people of not only what they've already accomplished, but what they came here for and reinvigorate, like light a spark under that initial inspiration and motivation, that can keep people going for sure. Yeah, and I think that's a great point because I think even in 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 all aspects of our lives that we forget the reasons why we're doing things often, and and uh, or the, or we discover that we actually don't have a good reason or a good uh, you know, reason why we're doing something uh, or a purpose, and and that may be a great key to why things aren't working out for us. So I think yeah, being able to constantly come back to reminding about the reason you're doing something in the first place is is critical. And then, I mean, okay, so we are, you often, you know, you have people that maybe they run through bumps in the road and they feel like running away. Uh, but part of the other thing is part of the reason why people feel running like running away is often because they feel guilty, right? You know, they feel guilty. Maybe I signed up with, with Laurie and, and, it's harder than I expected or um, or this the stuff happening in my life that's getting in the way. So rather than just confront it and talk to it, like I'll run away, you know, I'll run away and hide and just say that's quit. So how do you help people? Because this is I think that's typical of a lot of people because they'll just start to feel guilty. And the best way of dealing with that is just to shut off communication and run and hide. <laughs> That a uh, hundred percent. I love that you brought this up because this mm. is human nature too. That when we're we think we're failing, we hide and we wait until things get better to be back in communication with the coach. So it's important for a good coach to get those signals and realize like if I haven't heard from someone in a little while or someone was giving me good news, good news, good news, and then I'm getting no news, you know, <laughs> that mm -hmm. uh, to pull that out of people and to assure people in every session and every call I have is that remember, I am here for you when you feel really badly. That is why you have a coach. So it's counterintuitive. We want to hide, as you said, and go bury ourselves in our little hole and not talk to anyone and not wave, wave the white flag like, help me, help me. But, but that's really important signal for the person who's the coachee or the student or the participant is to keep making the commitment that when it gets hard and I think I'm awful and I think I'm failing, that I will get in touch with my coach, <laughs> whether that's mm. a text or, or in, you know, the, whatever the support structure is. For me, my group programs, I have a private Facebook group and in the one-on-one -on -one coaching, people can text me. And I always remind them, remember when it gets tough, reach out to your coach. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> takes a lot and, of reminding yeah and I guess the other part too is just reminding people too is that um yeah you know the coach is there for them but you're not doing it for the coach at the end of the day you're doing it for for you and the coach is there to support you and I think that sometimes maybe you know people get a little bit uh, you know confused and they think they're doing it for you the coach and therefore um at some stage they could say to themselves well I, I I don't really need to do this for Laurie anymore yeah that that is really interesting. Well, in the beginning, I kind of feel like whatever it takes, right? If someone's mm -hmm. trying to please me, their coach, yeah. but at the, at the end of the day, that will not carry the day. They do need to be responsible for their own actions and committed to adjusting and changing and transforming what they came for. So it is on the part of the coachee really incumbent upon each individual to get move themselves forward and to be in communication and to make the calls that they've scheduled and to do the work as designed. Um, but people do want to please the coach and don't want to get in trouble, which is kind of a mm -hmm. low grade motivation. But for me, it's like whatever it takes. And they mm -hmm. know they're going to get a big old hug from me anyway, and not be in trouble. <laughs> 
<laughs> and, and just and just on the other part, because we touched upon earlier about the fact that, uh, you know, the way the culture is today about everything being easy and all of that is when you engage with people, how do you help them to understand that? Yeah, it's it's not um, I mean, this is going to take work. It's going to take commitment and everything. I mean, it's not like climbing Mount Everest, but uh, but it could be for you. I mean, it may be that it may be that hard for you. But how do you balance that? Um, say yes you can do it and there's a process you can go through and you can come out the other end balance that with the fact of, of making sure that they understand that there's going to be work involved and that may be counterintuitive to a lot of other things that they're being told well in my particular area of intermittent fasting which mm -hmm. is eating in a pattern of time pausing from mm -hmm. eating and then eating later it actually does make life easier it takes some effort and that's what I help people, you know, set up to do it correctly. And it takes effort to get through life and people eating around you <laughs> and you, you're choosing to eat later. And mm -hmm. um, it does take some effort for sure. But people report that having this consistent practice actually makes life easier and and relieves a lot of anxiety and relieves a lot of confusion and decision fatigue and so no matter what the area that a person is being coached in i would think that the coach is trying to steer the person to have the experience that doing this consistently over time will make life easier for you. You will have the results that you want and it does take some effort, but it just becomes like second nature. You're like ri getting rid of bad habits and creating new habits really takes some effort consistently over time. And I've struggled to know um, how to set up the structure of my programs in terms of the amount of time, right? So I mm -hmm. would like everybody to work with me for a year. It takes a year. To, here's the timing, I think. It takes 30 days to get set up. It takes another 60 days, so that's 90, to really settle in. Then it takes the next three months to master it as a lifestyle and, and to, to have your mindset shift and to all of a sudden, usually around six months, people kind of wake up and they're like, oh, I'm in a whole new world now. And then the final six months totaling a year is this is how I live. These are the health markers that have turned around. This is the, the realization that my sleep and my nutrition and my meditation and, all, and my fitness and my work performance and all the things that I wanted to have affected have been realized and that I can live this way forever. I think that takes a year. And so it really does take a coach uh, to get you there or a community, a group of people mm -hmm. to get you yeah. there. No, I think that's a, I, I think that's a great, that's a great outline of what you just did there about the, yeah, it's a, it takes some time, it takes some, some practice, but developing habits. And I think that's the, the key and routines and, and let's face it. I mean, we have lots of habits and routines in our lives that we could probably do without. Um, so maybe replacing them with healthier ones may not be as, as huge a transition as we think. Yeah, I, replacing them with healthier ones. You know, the, we all know that in the moment that we're feeling uh, stressed or sad or angry or however, all the emotions, joy that we can feel, that what the habits that we have already in place to make things better, we all know intellectually usually don't serve us in the long run. So to put in place new habits over time that serve us in terms of our health and happiness and well-being and communication and success it does take time and i think it takes community yeah and i think uh, you're 100 percent right i think community and the coach because the one thing that the coach can always do is continue to show you the destination and show you where you're trying to get to and help and i think that's the and that's the key part to motivation is always have somebody there saying come on this is where you're going and you're going to get there and I would love to know that my voice <laughs> is in someone's ear as they are going through. I'm not there with them in their life. Sure. It's up to each individual to live your life and implement the new habits and practices and rituals that we're and take the old, the ones that don't work out. But I love the idea that I might be there whispering in their ear as they're navigating life and making choices and that more and more and more the choices will be towards the behaviors repetitively that make life better in the long run. That's yeah, exciting. Perfect. 
Yeah, that's a perfect way to end this, Laurie. Um, all of Laurie's information will be below this video, um, as you know from her last video here. Um, if you haven't, if this is the first time tuning in and seeing Laurie, Laurie, please do tell people a little bit more about what you do. Yes, I'm an intermittent fasting coach. So I teach people how to eat in a pattern of time to restore their natural healthy weight and all the health markers and to sleep better and have better digestion and, and feel more awake, alive, high energy. We achieve all that in a fasted state, which isn't exactly how we would imagine. It's the opposite <laughs> yeah. of what we'd imagine. So my business is fast forward wellness. So it's fastforwardwellness.com. And I have group programs and coach people one-on-one -on -one and it's, it's a great way to live. I love it. Fantastic. Listen, thanks again, Lori. Thanks for coming back and joining us. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline or CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.